Hi there, Doug Stewin with IT Creations with a 4U GPU server from Gigabyte, the G481HAO. If you're looking for GPU accelerated computational hardware, then this might be just the ticket. This system can support up to 10 PCI based GPUs with dual second generation Intel Xeon scalable processors. As a dual root system, it offers the tools for AI, AI training, AI inference, visual computing, and simulation plus other high performance applications. Let's take a look. This is not really a new new system as third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors are available. And this one will only support the first or second generation processors. Plus, this specific option doesn't support SXM2 form factor GPUs. That would be the G481-S80. And you can see that video here. SXM2 does offer significant gains in performance over the PCI based GPUs. Of course, you will pay extra for that, especially those GPUs. In addition to the G481-S80, there are a few other G481 systems with slight differences to each, like storage conditions and GPU support in general. All that said, the G481-HAO is a significant and worthy contender in the multi-GPU space. This is a dual root system, meaning the GPUs are split between the CPUs, with each in charge of five of the 10 GPUs housed in this system. It's designed for large-scale deployments. If this was a single root system, like the G481-HA1, it would have all of those GPUs routed through a single CPU first via the PCI switches. That CPU would then communicate with the other CPU via the UltraPath interconnect. With this one, you need both of those processors or you only get half the goods. There are several GPUs supported on this system, including the NVIDIA Tesla P100 and P40 featuring Pascal architecture the V100 and V100S with Volta architecture for computational acceleration, and the T4 with Turing architecture, an asset for distributed environments. There's also the NVIDIA RTX 8000 and the A6000. Those are for applications involving rapid visualization for workstations or AI and deep learning applications. Also a lone AMD Radeon Instinct M150 32 gig, also used for computational acceleration. The weapon of choice in this case, or at least, with the highest memory bandwidth is the NVIDIA Tesla V100S general purpose GPU. With this system, you too could be a gigabyte billionaire. For a limited time, you can save up to $500 off the purchase price of a gigabyte R481-NAO GPU server you configure using our configurator with a price point of $5,000 or more. That's right, just click that link to start configuring your server. When you're ready to make a purchase, just mention this video. Other than that ridiculous advertising campaign, your business or scientific endeavor could be reaping the rewards of hyper gig speeds with this Gigabyte 481 HAO GPU server. This is an interesting system. At 4U, there is quite a bit of storage up front, placing raw data close to the CPUs for quick access to cached and large data sets. A tiered storage format offers 12 3.5 inch SAS SATA hot swappable drive bays on the bottom, and another bank of 10 2.5 inch hot swappable drive bays on the top. Eight of those are NVMe and have orange drive tray release tabs. The two adjacent drive bays and those in the lower bays have blue drive tray release tabs indicating SAS SATA HDD SSD support. On the top left, there's a PCI port for the pre-installed RAID card. On the right, a control panel has health status LEDs, HDD status and system status, on off, ID reset and non-maskable interrupt buttons plus a few ports including dual one gigabit ethernet and one gigabit management LAN port with more LEDs indicating link activity and speed. Then there's two USB 3.0 ports and a VGA port for a crash card. You can also install an optional plug and play LAN module on the back of the system. That one can support dual 10 gigabit ethernet, LAN ports and a server management port. All of that GPU enriched high performance computing can be managed by Gigabyte's proprietary server management or GSM. This software suite is free of charge, delivering a faster ROI when compared to some other companies that charge a licensing fee to manage the system you just bought. It uses the AMI Megarack SP-X baseboard management controller solution and Aspeed AST 2500 module, which is compatible with both Redfish API and IPMI 2.0. It's used for both remote and at chassis management of the system. GSM has several sub programs to help monitor the system health. Also a mobile application, GSM mobile. It offers an easy to use browser based user interface and supports a variety of features. Again, this software suite is provided free of cost and the mobile app is compatible with both Android and iOS operating systems. As you would guess, oh, and another free of charge program is offered by NVIDIA called NVIDIA GPU Cloud or NGC. 
NGC provides a container registry and software that enables the creation of GPU accelerated containers for scale up and scale out multi GPU and multi node systems. Of course, NVIDIA designed this for use with NVIDIA products, but I think you can still use it with the other GPUs supported on this system. It offers support for Docker and Singularity, plus VMware Sphere, and new containers are published monthly. NGC allows quick and easy deployment and significantly reduces setup time. As you would guess, this system draws a lot of power to support up to 10 GPUs. Providing the juice are 380 plus platinum 2200 watt PSUs. I'm sure you'll notice the PCI slots above, which we'll, we'll take a closer look at inside. That GPU fan module is for the two top mounted GPUs. You will need to remove those fans and the GPU PCI bracket inside to install GPUs. Many of the drive cables from the back plane plug directly into the system board. As previously mentioned, a PCI slot is perched right above the drive trays for a pre-installed HD RAID controller and expander board. Provides support for SAS at 12 gigabits per second or SATA at 6 gigabits per second. A slot on the system board supports a virtual RAID on CPU or VROC key for use with solid state drives and NVMe. The cables for the NVMe drives plug directly into the motherboard. The VROC key is included with the system but only works with the Intel based NVMe SSD drives. The motherboard has two CPU sockets, each in charge of 12 memory module slots, with six to either side. This platform can use platinum, gold, silver, or bronze CPUs, with 8 to 28 physical cores and 16 to 56 virtual threads. Each of the processors also supports six memory channels and 12 memory module slots with variable memory speeds depending on the CPU, memory module, and configuration. In addition to load reduced or registered memory modules, this system can also be outfitted with up to three terabytes of data centric persistent memory modules, DCP MMs. Persistent memory modules offer resiliency and speed in 12 of the 24 slots, but are only compatible with second generation Intel Xeon scalable processors. The remaining 12 slots would be outfitted with registered memory modules matching the total number of installed persistent memory modules in the adjacent slot. DCP MMs also have a caching feature, which regular DRAMs do not. For the top memory speed of 2933 mega transfers per second, you will also need those second generation processors, which you can only get with the Skylake first generation processors is support for the F series Omnifabric processors, which were discontinued with the release of the second gen CPUs. With that option, you can install four QSFP28 LAN ports for total 100 gigabit per second bandwidth bypassing the PCI lanes with a direct cable from the IO controller to the CPU. Not sure why those really never gained traction. Just past the system board is a row of six dual fan modules, which bridge the gap between the motherboard and the PCI board. Between the connection from the CPUs to the GPUs is a PCI switch, making all of this PCI bandwidth for 10 full height, full width NVIDIA Tesla V100S GPUs possible. Each of the GPUs fits in a PCI Gen 3.0 by 16 slot with a by 16 PCI link. Two of those GPUs are mounted in the PCI bracket on top of the other eight, and that's where the external fan bracket comes into play, ensuring air is pulled over the last two GPUs and maintaining operational temperature at peak performance. On a side note, the NVIDIA Tesla V100S GPU comes with 32 gigabytes natively and features tensor cores with 1134 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. It's plugged as the most advanced data center GPU ever built to accelerate AI, high performance computing, data science and graphics, a title previously held by the V100. That said, perhaps the definition has not been updated since they released a few other GPUs. Namely, the successor, the Ampere-based A100, offering more than twice the performance of the Volta-based V100S. <laughs> Technology, what can you say? Of course, those GPU servers outfitted with the SXM2 or SXM3 form factor GPUs use NVIDIA's NVLink technology, enabling the GPUs to function as one, plus operating at speeds of up to 300 gigabytes per second, compared to only 32 gigabytes per second through the PCI bus with a PCI-based GPU server. Sounds like I'm bashing this server, but au contraire. This is a wicked fast system and offers great performance, even if it is still a PCI 3.0 based system. Those two PCI switches enable the PCI bus to connect 10 GPUs with a by 16 PCI bus lane or 160 total lanes. The switches facilitate orderly processing and caching, enabling the seamless and fast processing of all that data using only the 96 actual PCI 3.0 lanes. This would be the combined PCI lane total available off of the dual scalable CPUs at 48 PCI 3.0 lanes apiece. And we haven't even thrown those NVMe drives into the mix yet. Each of those NVMe drives requires a by four PCI 3.0 lane. With eight of those, that's an additional 32 PCI lanes to add to the 160 lanes used by the GPUs. 
Then there's a single by 16 slot at the back of the chassis that can be used for a high-performance I.O. controller, like a broadband card offering up to 100 gigabytes per second transfer speeds. And no, I didn't forget about the RAID controller in front with a by 8 PCI slot. So here we are at, let's see, 160 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 for 216 PCI draining bits of technology working like an engine to deliver the performance to your applications. It may seem like your pistons are all firing at once, but they're not. They each take some microsecond breaks in between. And in this case, that caching and fast storage up front close to the CPUs. The bottom line, the Gigabyte G481HO GPU server is still very relevant in processing the needs of modern data center or enterprise business. It offers a balanced dual root system with 10 high performance GPUs for superior data processing in large deployments. Keep in mind, if you are looking for one of these, IT Creations has them. Oh, and if you have any questions on this or any other server, post them in the comments section below. And maybe check out our other review of the G481-S80 GPU server featuring SMX2 form factor GPUs and NVLink. Also consider subscribing to our channel as we will be showing more servers and professional workstations. Until next time, I'm Doug Stewart with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.